Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Workshop Tutorials, brought to you by ModMyPi, BuyAPi.ca, and PyShop.us. In this series of videos, we'll demonstrate nine projects that could be made using the YouTube Workshop Kit for Raspberry Pi. These projects are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Pi's input and output functions, as well as creating programs in Python that we'll use to control the Pi's hardware. In this fifth tutorial, User Inputs, we'll configure our program to allow user interaction using variables and user inputs. We don't need to make any changes to our circuit from tutorial 4, so let's get straight into the programming for tutorial 5. Change directories into your code folder. This time, instead of using the touch command, let's use nano to create our new file. Simply type nano and then the file name that we're going to create, touch underscore, sorry, five underscore user input blink.py. This opens straight into the new file and you can see the file name here at the top. Copy and paste your code in from whatever source you're using. And let's make sure that all the formatting is correct. Looks good. Now let's take a closer look at the code. We'll break it into sections and take it one part at a time. We'll call these sections 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Section 1 remains identical throughout all of our tutorials. We're very familiar with this Python declaration by now. As we did in tutorial four, we're using both the OS library and the time library so that we can access the sleep function and also the clear screen command. We're always using the BCM pin numbering system and we're still using pins 17 and 27 as our outputs. In section four, we start to use variables for the first time. By saying LED choice equals zero, we're declaring that LED choice is going to be the variable name and that its initial value is going to be zero. Now, because we've used an integer, which is a whole number that's either positive or negative, that automatically sets that variable to be an integer variable. If we were to use a decimal number like 3.5 instead, then LED choice would automatically be set to be a floating point variable instead. So we'll use these two variables, LED choice and count, to keep track of which light we want to turn on and also how many times it should flash before we stop the program. In section five, we're using three print commands in a row. This simply gives us three lines of text on screen at the same time. At the end of section five, we begin using the input command to collect information from the user. We've stated LED choice equals input parentheses and then this statement. So choose your option colon will be printed on screen. The program will wait for a character to be entered before the program continues. Whatever character is entered is assigned to the variable LED choice. Now that we've collected the user's choice for which LED to flash, the real fun begins. We're going to use two if statements to create the two separate conditions for either the red light or the blue light. In tutorial four, we used an if else statement, but this is a great alternative. Notice that when we're comparing a variable in Python, we're going to use the two equals sign. If LED choice equals equals one, then do the following. Within each of the if statements, we have similar program. We'll clear the screen, print which LED was chosen, and then ask again using the input function, how many times we want that light to blink. 
Then we use a while loop to count down the number of flashes until we get to zero and stop. Each flash requires an on, a sleep, and then an off, and then a sleep. That makes a single flash cycle. After each time the light flashes, we simply remove one from the counter and the loop continues until the count equals zero. I just noticed a small error here. Our choice number two was the blue light, so this print statement should actually say you picked the blue LED. As we work with conditional structures and loops in Python, it's really important to indent our code so that we can follow the structure of the program. This makes it visually evident where things change. In this case, we've used four spaces here and eight spaces here. So every time that a new level of indent is required, you add four keyboard spaces. So that's our program. Let's save and go run it. Press Control X to exit. Yes, Y to save and enter to confirm. Use sudo python and then the file name 5 user input link.py. Which LED do we want to blink? Let's start with red. Let's make it blink five times. Now there's no loop here, so as soon as it finishes running, we've exited from the program, and we have to run the program again if we'd like to make the blue LED blink. Let's test the blue one. This time we'll make the blue blink three times. Success! Thank you for watching, and please follow us on social media for more Pi projects and resources.